Good evening. Welcome to the July 26, 2010 Goffstown Board of Selectmen meeting. Uh, first order of business is a Pledge of Allegiance. Would everybody please stand? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First agenda item is acceptance or correction of minutes of 7-19-2010, and I'm going to put those off since uh, our Chairman Scott Gross is not here so that we can have a discussion on that or uh, vote on the full board. Next item is announcements, and my understanding is we don't have any announcements this evening. Uh, we'll move on to our third item, which is public comment. Uh, this portion of the meeting, we... Uh, accept comments from members of the public who are not on the agenda. Uh, is anybody here who would like to speak? Lowell. My surprise visuals here. Am I in your way? <laughs> just, uh, Why don't my, you just tell me to seat. move? Not unless you don't mind being chairman. blind. <laughs> Right, as, as most of you know, the first Gosstown Community Rail Trail Day was ha held this past Saturday on the 24th, mm -hmm. and it was a great success. We had nearly 100 guests join us on our two guided walk locations. I know some of you were among those attending. I hope you enjoyed your walk. Uh, there was a wide range of ages, ranging from stroller rider age to probably in the neighborhood of 80. Uh, in addition to the event guests, a number of other people were also seen out using the trail on their own. Parks and Rec Center location had the largest number of participants. For the 10 o'clock walk, the entire parking lot was full with few parking in the grass. Our Parks and Rec Director Rick generously uh, st stepped up to help out and directed traffic you know, through the parking lot. Uh, there were s several people on the Parks and Rec walk that decided to stop at Magoo's and walk back later. Uh, others went for ice cream at Deverance or the ice cream truck that w was parked at Surrett Field. So this demonstrates how trail users are good for local businesses. Uh, there were a good number of questions from the participants, with some of the more common ones being similar to how much of the trail is done, uh, when will Section X or the rest of the trail be done, uh, when will the connection to Manchester be done? And when will you be doing another event like this? So finally, I'd like to thank all our volunteers who made this possible, particularly Paula Bedard, who is our event coordinator. And of course, thanks to everyone who came out to experience the Gosstown Rail Trail with us. Thank you very much. And anybody else would like to speak? Representative Heichel. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, John Heichel, uh, 483 Mass Road, Gosstown. Um, I wasn't aware that Lowell was going to say that. I came down actually to say that I participated in that walk as well. And I uh, thoroughly enjoyed the walk from the uh, Pox and Rec to Magoo's. Um, I also enjoyed the ride back. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, but I want to say that that uh, I want to commend the people that have been working diligently on that trail. I think you've done a great job, and uh, I would certainly support any private funding that uh, um, would be necessary to complete this trail. Um, also, s Saturday. Um, I spent the day with um, former Senator uh, Gordon Humphrey at his home with um, gubernatorial, gubernatorial candidate John Stephen, uh, several uh, other U.S. and uh, state uh, candidates in this upcoming election, um, and several other dignitaries enjoyed Senator Humphrey's gorgeous home that he has uh, in Cheshire uh, atop a very high hill with a great view. Um, and, and up there, uh, I don't want to spend much time on this, but um, we went 
for a particular reason was for the Americans for Prosperity Foundation, and we signed a pledge. And that pledge was, as candidates for public office of New Hampshire, I pledge to you that I have elected to serve the people. I will work tirelessly to cut taxes and fees, cut spending, cut the size of government, and uphold both New Hampshire and the United States Constitution. Um, this is for elected officials. There were, I don't know, there was a hundred up there. I mean, there was a lot of people that went to this event, maybe even more than a hundred. Um, and I made five copies, and I'd be glad to pass that, or just to pass it around so everyone here can see it. Um, and it kind of, kind of says uh, our commitment to uh, limited government, good government, affordable government, and uh, maintaining the New Hampshire way and a great place to live such as Gothstown. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. I do have a, can we have a question? Sure. Just, just out of curiosity, I, and you've been in front of the board a few times and we talk about reductions or cuts. Do you have any specifics that you see for Gothstown? I mean, not just to generalize, do you have a specific idea or, or a specific plan or a specific? I'm just curious. Yes, I do. I mean, I don't know if that's something you would share with us then? Or? Well, I think um, not being thoroughly prepared to give you the full scale of what of some of my ideas, um, but yes, the answer is yes, I do have a few ideas that may, that may help you. Okay. When, when, when you would like to share them with us, so maybe you can get a hold of Sue and we can get some time in. I will certainly uh, be glad to share them with you and right. Sue. And Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Seeing none, we'll move on to the next item, which is the Public Works Director, Carl Quirrell, which who may not be here because we're running a few minutes early. And if that's the case, we'll just move on to the Town Administrator's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Your weekly meeting schedule is in your packets. Tomorrow night is EDC at 6.30. Conservation Commission is Wednesday night at 7. And CIP is having the deliberative session Thursday night at 7. In your con consensus folder this evening, you have the AP warrants, employee status reports, and event permit application. And can we remove the... Uh Yes, a second employee status report right. for later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, I had assumed that uh, we would have already <laughs> had that Discussed discussion that by now. Right. Hey, look who came in. Right. Ah. Well, actually, <laughs> 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 there's no motion, is there? No. Okay, so if you want. Here, we'll go right to Carl. Timing's everything, Carl. That's right. <laughs> Thank you for showing up early. <laughs> Good evening. I'll start with the monthly report. Um, as you know, the major project that we're really involved in is the South Mass um, and Wallace Road project. Uh, they are working steadily along and um, right now it's everything seems to be going okay they're not they're not quite as ahead of schedule as I had hoped but with a little luck if the weather holds we ought to be able to pull it together um, we are working on there you know a few things these ARA projects are tricky because um, you know when you when you're doing a construction job in the ground quantities change and shift and it's really tricky with the IRA because everything has to be like a documented change order and you got to balance things constantly back and forth. So the uh, engineering consultants are really earning their keep on, on that job. Um, as you can see, we've had some issues with the paving and just getting that pervious pavement, uh, getting the mixed design to meet spec and get it approved uh, has been a bit of a challenge. But as last I knew, they, they were coming back with a new design that hopefully was going to get us there um, so anyway it's going well we're trying to keep everything um, keep the public informed we've had very few complaints I don't know if, if 
anybody else has been getting complaints, but we, we haven't gotten too many, so I think in general we're communicating okay with the public. Um, that slope project that we've been working on for the past year down in, in uh, Moose Club Park is just about ready to put out the bid. Um, the wetlands permit is, is in process. Comments are going back and forth on that, but we've kind of met with the state numerous times, and I, the state is basically comfortable with it. We just have to get all the state's partners uh, on board with it. And the sewer commission has authorized us to go ahead and, and put it out to bid. So I think I would expect this week that will be advertised later this week. Um, the Lynchville water service project, that is still remains uh, a very big challenge for us. Megan and I have had two meetings with um, Bill Drescher trying to work through the, the town liability issues with that. And uh, we spent a few hours with him Friday. I think we've come up with something that that uh, we can at least make work. But before we finalize that, we're setting up a meeting with the state and EPA and Attorney Drescher um, to make sure that everybody's on the same page and see if maybe it's easier for EPA to back off um, some of the requirements of the grant and, and maybe we can make it a less cumbersome uh, process than what we came up with with Attorney Drescher. So I'm hoping that meeting is going to be this week. Yeah, um, just two questions. Uh, one of the questions is, didn't you, I thought you mentioned that another community had done something similar, was it? Well, it was it was similar except the other community was dealing with an association. Okay. So it was similar to like Medville. Right. And what they did was they made the association a subsidiary, just like just like we did with Medville Med when Medville had their issue. Okay. Sub-recipient of the grant. Yeah, sub-recipient. And, and in this case with uh, Lynchville Grove Park, that's just not, just doesn't exist. Right. Okay, so I think Nick had a question. Yeah. Uh, when you talk about engineering at a standstill, what engineering do we have to do? Well, we, we do, it's basically done. What we've got to finalize is the spec, the, the bid document. And the bid document, I mean, we're literally, we have a document that thick ready to go out to bid, but whatever the final contractual agreements end up being have to be reflected in the bid document. So we're kind of at that stage. So there's no engineering? No, not really. It's just it's just tweaking the bid document to fit whatever the final contract document is going to look like. Um, so it's, I mean, it's very close. It's literally, a, once we once we get all those documents from Bill Drescher, I would expect a day or two, the thing will be finalized and over to Spillers ready to advertise. Um, but we really, really need to I mean, every corner we turn, it's just more issues pop up in our face, and we're really, really trying to be very cautious. This is a pretty high exposure project. Okay. Um, I don't know if Megan's gotten a chance to update that timeline after our meeting Friday, but I know we talked about getting that checklist uh, updated. <laughs> the update's more or less going to be changing the update date, nevertheless. <laughs> Because it's just not much has happened because of the going back and forth. Um, I'm sure you've all gotten around town as far as um, DPW, the operations side, has gone. Where they're really moving along on our our road projects. You know, we the first couple of months of summer we did a lot of the shim and overlay work, so we were moving pretty quickly around town. Uh, the past month we actually have dug into some of the smaller reclamation sections on, you know, trying to uh, flatten up, like, for instance, the really bad part of Tibbets Hill Road and Lauren Lane and some of those roads that had to be uh, ground up and a little more involved than just shimming and overlaying. Um, they made good progress. They're making good progress even today. Uh, as a matter of fact, they're talking about um, Continental coming in probably next week. I mean, those sections we hope to have ready for, for pavement by next week. Um, We've continued all the usual stuff, um, you know, the cleaning, the vac on truck, the usual things that we try to do. Um, I have a bullet at the end. The one thing we would be doing now that is delayed is the line striping. And just so you are all aware, if you get questions and, and uh, the public is aware, there's an issue with paint, with uh, the paint suppliers. And uh, we got it. We were approached almost a month ago from our, our the, the vendor that had given us the low bid quote back when we put it out to bid 
and they were pr uh, proposing an alternate material to us. Um, we got together with DOT, with the traffic folks up at DOT. DOT is not familiar with this product. It's not a, a proven product. And our understanding from DOT was that this was not going to be a long-term problem. It was going to be kind of a blip. Um, so we decided we'd wait it out for a little while and see if it worked its way out. Um, so we'll be touching base kind of with the vendor again soon and see where it's at. As, as far as his supply and whether or not they can get us in the scheduling chain now or if we still have a problem. Uh, and then as you see, we did our our cycle, that defensive driving class that LGC does, it's like a three-year cycle, so we, ha we have been working question, the staff uh, through question that. Question. Help me understand why the uh, Department of Transportation is concerned with the type of paint we use in, on line striping. Well, they, they're not concerned. They're just, we went to them for advice because it was a product we weren't familiar with. And, uh, you know, they have their materials and testing lab up there. So most products that are on the market, they're at least familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, and this was a product that they had not, they had no testing. knowledge of or didn't know. So they, they recommended that we get some kind of a warranty from the vendor at a minimum or it's traffic paint. So I don't know what kind of warranty you get, you know. <laughs> Um, so again, if when we contact the vendor, if it's still a problem, then we'll start talking more seriously about switching products. But for right now, I'm hoping that when we contact them, they'll say they're they're back on track. Thank you. Um, I don't know if the board we updated the the project um, spreadsheet. Uh, like I said, everything's moving along. I don't know if there's any other questions or things I didn't cover. Um, but I'm still, I'm still feeling we're doing pretty well this year. There's nothing serious. You know, some of the Penardville projects, because of the traffic with the sewer job down there, we've backed out of Penardville, and we're kind of watching how that sewer job progresses. So there's a chance that we, we may decide not to try to get back into Penardville just based on traffic. But Nick has a question. Yeah, uh, of these projects, which are the ones that are pending engineering work? Um, well, we have, what I did is I brought a list uh, that Megan had prepared. Um, the pending work that we have is, you know, we, um, we would like to be getting out and starting Addison Road design. Uh, we have a very rough draft of plans for Addison Road, but that would be next year's project. We're trying to get, before snow flies, get the groundwork done on that. Um, we have some work to do to clean, close out our Elm Street project. That was a federal highway funded emergency repair job from the floods. The work is done, but we got to close out the paperwork. Um, the rail trail, uh, the can, 2000. Can I just stop you there? Is sure. that, that's engineering work, or is that? Yeah, we got to do some um, as built. It's really chasing paperwork down and um, working with the state. We, we have an issue there with. Um, one of the subcontractors and the paperwork involved in meeting the federal grant requirements. So it's it's a little bit of a complicated situation. Um, the 2009 rail trail grant, the box culvert, um, we need to finalize the plans and specs and get that ready to go out to bid. And then working on the 2010 uh, rail trail grant, again that we need to finalize plans and prepare to go out to bid. And we have the uh, 2011 TE grant that we want to start working with um, with DOT uh, on those crossings, those grade crossings. For that's the one we applied for with the the four um, road crossings. That's next year's grant, and uh, we need to just coordinate with DOT before we finalize. You're talking about the rail trail crossing. Yeah. Yeah, oh, those four? are pending. I thought there were three. There's three, there's three, three grants which oh, we have okay. yet to spend money. Right. We have received. So we're kind of backlogged there. Um, the high school is waiting for us. Excuse me, uh, before you yeah. go on on the, the rail trail, is there money within the grants for the engineering? The I, TE I grant see. has a line. Yeah. Yeah. So the 2011 one, yes. Um, the other ones, no. So the two, okay, the 2009, that was for the culvert. Yeah, 2010, 2010 is for Surrett Park. Uh, Correct. Gate access. pedestrian access as well as uh, the final surface on 
two hundred yards of trail. Yeah, which conflicts with the uh, slope stabilization right. project on the rail trail. And those aren't engineered before we put the grant in. Aren't there designs or anything that have there's to go into those? There's a no, design not. concept, concept, but we gotcha. we have to do the, the bid concept on the grant. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Um, the high school is waiting for us to do some uh, cost estimating. They're looking at changing the traffic flow around the high school for the next school year. Um, so we've talked to uh, Superintendent Buckley about trying to do some budget estimates and it involves some CAD drawing as well. So that's kind of a backlog. Um, we've got some work to do with um, bridge aid we need to get going on some future projects with Bridge Aid as well as uh, we've got an issue on Henry Bridge, the old Henry Bridge that have the, the new bridge reports have just been done. We haven't even gotten a hard copy of it yet, but the state did contact us. There's some issues down there that we need to take a look at. And we still have to get our bid out for the GPS, the replacement GPS equipment and the sidewalk tip down project, uh, the handicap tip downs, the whole sidewalk project that we've talked about when we did that sidewalk plan for our 2010 money that is still waiting in the wings and those things are not even on ra on uh, the engineering radar screen yet they're just hanging out there Carl uh, near the top of the road plan uh, library parking lot Plan's been approved, but it says here, pending a discussion with our board. Yeah, and we had we actually had that discussion. Right. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Right. So that that That's note didn't change, but we we just conferred with uh, Diane. Um, we'll be going over there, probably like the second week in August, somewhere in that. As soon as we finish up up in Tibbets, we're probably going to move the crew over there, and they don't have any programming conflicts on the grass over there, so that'll be our one of our Feedback next stops. Definitely got a lot going, Carl. Um, I appreciate the report, so it gives me a better idea of what's tr transpiring. <laughs> and regarding what uh, Nick was talking about engineering, because we had spoken at one meeting, if, if, the, if, if you had enough man hours available to do the engineering necessary, do you? are we still in that situation? Or Yeah, yeah, we have an issue we're going to talk about, I think, later tonight. Where okay. We All do right. have a, a gentleman that can help us out, and that's what we're proposing. I wonder, should we have that discussion now regarding that? Because I. Th Without naming names, there was a discussion on whether or not we were doing a temporary hire or a contracted service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And, and what, what led us to the temporary hire was um, really an insurance liability thing. Um, this individual uh, is a newly retired person. So he doesn't carry his own uh, acts and omissions liability insurance. So he wasn't really comfortable doing it as a contractor. Um, so you're either going to go out and hire a consulting firm, you know, if you want somebody that has liability insurance, or you have to bring them on as a staff person so that they fall under the town's liability protection umbrella. So as doing it as a temporary employee, there's no benefits involved. He would, he's automatically covered by our liability insurance. And our workers' comp? Yeah. Yeah. Workers' comp, too. So that was that was the reason. We, <coughs> you know, Janice and I met and talked about the options, and I met with the individual and talked about the options, and, and uh, that's what we felt was the safest. Only yeah. the mandatory of benefits would apply. Yeah, FICA and... I, I remember the conversation we had, and I'm comfortable with having a set amount of work, getting a price for that work. Um, I, I'm not in favor of hiring someone, whether it's temporary, part-time. Um, I, I just if there's three or four projects to do, get a price for getting the engineering done for those projects, and and you pay someone, um, so you know what the cost is. And we just sent a letter to all the department heads saying that the Board of Selectmen were not going to um, support any expansion of staff hours or staff positions. And I know that's for next year, but we're still looking at cutting costs now. And, you know, rail trail, 
if there's monies in the grants for that engineering, those projects should be contracted out and mm -hmm. we get a cost for it and we know what that cost is versus. Yeah, I think Carl was looking at the cost and the contracting costs are much higher than hiring someone right. part-time or yeah. temporary. Yeah, you'll pay more than three times. Yeah, Carl, do you have any, uh, do you have a, any sense of how many, um, well, time-wise versus dollar amounts, or is that something that we really shouldn't be discussing publicly in case well, this I, has I don't to think be put out, in again, case this has to be put out to, uh, for pricing? Well, not not if we treat it as a as a new hire. I think if uh, if we wanted to have a consultant do all of the work that's on that list, yeah, that would fall under our purchasing policy, and we'd have to get proposals. Well, I guess that's the reason why I'm I'm saying that because then we wouldn't be able to discuss that. I guess you know I can understand what what Nick's concern is, um, but then again, for let's just use some. Uh, generic numbers. I mean, let's say this these particular jobs that you're talking about, put them out to bid, and they're going to cost, let's say, twenty-five thousand dollars. Right now, time-wise, in the way that you're looking at it, it, would it come out? I guess Nick's concern is that it would, might go over that. But I guess the concern uh, also is, then again, could you get that amount for considerably less? Let's say eighteen thousand. Versus the twenty-five. I mean, I assume that's you have some yeah. type of a handle on that. Yeah, I, I anticipated. I mean, we I did some figuring because we we uh, we were pretty specific when we had our lab of discussion. It would just be this year. Wouldn't carry any next year. It's just for a few months. Um, so I envisioned even at the rate you saw, um, you know, it would end up being about twenty or twenty-one thousand. And I can tell you, to put all of this into a scope, you'd pay way way more than that if you. Got proposals. You know, we'd probably be up fifty, sixty thousand to do all the things that we that are on that list um, out as a, to a consultant. I mean, it's there's a lot there. It's a lot of work. And so let me. I guess the other concern there is a question: is if there's some money that's in, like let's say the rail trail, would that money specifically that's in there for engineering cover this? Does it matter how that money's expended? No. I don't think our, it does. Our federal TE grant money isn't available till late this right. year, very That's late, right. <laughs> end of November. Yeah. And this, uh, this is. And they made it this clear is concerning that we can't do work ahead of time. And as I understand it, this is concerning uh, providing short-term help just for this summer and fall. Right. And that's why you would like it categorized as a, a temporary hire. Right. But I guess that, that's part of my concern is that we have three trail grants, which very specifically we've you know, stated we're not using any tax dollars. The, the smaller ones are in-kind donations, and, um, and then the TE grant is uh, impact fees. For engineering, the town engineer is prepared to plans that will go out for the RFP on the culvert. Okay. Those are done. I thought they weren't done. There was still well, engineering it, that had to be done. The, the that permit, was on the list. The, the final permit is not issued, so the final bid documents are not. Okay, so now if we're hiring someone cool. to do this work, that's additional town funds that we're expending for these projects. I believe Carl wanted this temp hire cons uh, for engineering planning on other tasks, not just yes, things not just associated the with the rail trail. It's just that whole backlog. Everything on that list we're supposed to get done this oh, summer. I think maybe <coughs> this, and this I, I don't see that temporary hire facilitating planning for any of our three grant projects. So I, okay. you know, I'm interested in what other projects Carl wants to have this okay. just assistance. Just so I can get some clarification then, because the way I understood it, and if I'm wrong, I apologize, was that th that within these grants, the, 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 the cost for engineering was within those grants. Is that correct? That's what I thought I heard earlier. We have two grants from the uh, New Hampshire Trails Bureau. Uh, they provide money for the project. It's, it's, a, it's a concept. Correct. The yeah. town contributes a 20% match. We're allowed to uh, uh, part of that so the match, match would be the town engineer's time. 
Okay, that's what I was trying to get because I thought earlier there was just a little differently it was worded. As well as uh, okay. in, in lieu of volunteer hours and, and some other of donations. This, and and the, besides the culvert, these other grants, the money doesn't come till next year, correct? The culvert money is good now. Yeah. And the other, the and the, grant? Uh, the money for the surrette is good until 30 June next year. I guess I'm, so I guess where I'm going with that question is that regarding the engineering uh, as we stack this and lay it out because we're talking about time to do the, do these projects, is that correct? How do, I mean, how do you, what's the best way to put it? Is these something that can be done at a later date or, or other, I mean, how do you prioritize it, I guess? Well, the, um, they, they certainly will be done at a later date if we don't get some help because the way we've prioritized it, we have to get through these ARA projects. Those all have uh, completion dates later this year, so that, that we really don't have any choice with those. Um, the same with that that uh, land, the the grant for the slope that expires the end of this year. So that those are our top priorities. Those have to get done. Um, we really want to get Addison Road done before snow flies because it's very hard to get the plans done. And I don't want to be doing plans next April for a, if we have a major project to do on Addison Road. So. You know, Addison Road would be my next priority uh, that we jump on. Um, beyond that, all of this chasing paperwork, uh, you know, for instance, Elm Street, those are down my list, but they're very high up on Janice O'Connell's list because that's all money, that's all revenue due the town that we've already spent, we've already done the work, we just have to tie up the ribbon and we get money back from the state. So, uh, though it's not high on my list because I got a whole bunch of other things I got to get done. It's very high on Janice's list, so I get constant reminders from her that, hey, where are we on this? Yeah. Um, so, so I guess that's what, I mean, if we could take Addison Road and your, maybe the ADA sidewalk project yeah, and put those idea. out and, and put out a request for an engineering proposal for an individual or individuals to provide the engineering for those two projects at X cost. That frees up your department not having to worry about those two projects there's a set dollar amount we know what the deliverables are and it's 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 a finite cost that comes from the road plan to pay for those projects I, I can tell you like for instance the sidewalk tip downs you'd spend more on the engineering than you would on the work it just that's the way it works an engineering consultant you're spending a minimum of 115 dollars an hour for somebody to type your letter so it's it it's and I'm not bashing my consultant friends for technical projects you need technical help something like putting together a sidewalk bid it's really a case of pulling together plans and specs and, and uh, okay so obviously there's not details. much work with that one than yeah Addison Road and Addison Road you could expect to probably get back if you use the rule of thumb even if you used uh, an eight percent construction cost estimate which is a very low-end design estimate You'd be looking at uh, well, what's what's eight percent of a million bucks, uh, actually mil million and a half. I mean, you're you're looking at probably over a hundred thousand dollars just to do that set of plans. So it's and, and that's what you're into is those kind of dollars. That construction estimate's like a million and a half. I mean, Seven eight percent would be a very low, low, low ball engineering design estimate. So we could pursue it, but I, I have a good idea what the end result is, and I'd rather not spin my wheels. We're looking ten percent of that would be fifteen thousand. My math is right. Ten percent of fifty thousand. Yeah, fifty thousand. They dropped to zero. Math is not right. Okay. Yeah. I'm just trying to put it in perspective. And that and that's why we shy away from using consultants to do all our road plan work because they, you know, those guys. Uh, I mean, you just look look at what we spent. Uh, well, you probably don't want to know what we spent. <laughs> <laughs> so fast in the roundabout. I mean, it's it adds up fast. It adds up really fast. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we invested heavily in the GIS 
system so that we could do a lot of that work in house and it works very well for us. Okay. Anything else? Just on the road, on the road. Are we still on engineering or are we road moving plan. on? Well, and if there was no other questions, I just want to get Jeff okay. Carr to take us where we're going, where he. Well, we're doing. No, just, just one, and it's not, it's oh. not a big deal. Just on the traffic lights. They're still on order. Are they yeah. coming in at the end when we're all done these projects? <laughs> <I'm just laughs> well, <laughs> honestly, it probably will be the end of this, this season. We okay. probably won't get them before the season. They, that's the situation. Those were such a brand new product that they had to wait until they had enough of them ordered to even gear up the manufacturer. You know, so the DOT was supposed to order ten sets, and the last I'd heard, he hadn't gotten the signed PO yet from. DOT, so we're sitting in the hopper. Every time I drive by, I'm waiting to see one of these lights out there. Yeah. I'm curious. Okay, so th this won't be a this year thing. No, I, I, if we're lucky, we'll get in the end of the season. All right, thank okay. you. Anything else on any of that report? Well, anything else on that report? I guess not. Okay. Um, the other thing that I had before you tonight was this uh, change in our SOP regarding um, uniforms and attire. The employees have come to me, uh, as you know, this summer has been a uncharacteristically dry, hot summer. And the guys have always come in August talking about can we wear shorts, can we wear, you know, but it's usually a very short window and by the time we get around to discussing it <laughs> the weather is broke and it's really not a big deal uh, this year it came early I've actually got a couple of employees who have missed time uh, because of things like heat rash and, and, uh, and they're suffering from from the heat so they really have are bringing forward this issue of being able to wear shorts now I'm typically not in favor of it um, and I have never been in favor of it but I also realize that there are some um, serious health issues with with heat and what you expect people to do. Um, a lot of places would would uh, just have the guys. As a matter of fact, Goffstown Public Works historically, way back when, used to do it. Also, where you just on really hot days, you did other things that didn't involve being out uh, working in the heat. But you see the list of things we have to get done, and I really can't afford. <laughs> when it's a dry, hot summer like this, to have the guys kind of hiding in the shade all the time. Um, you know, and, and I have to admit, as I look around the world, uh, every other town around us, the guys are in shorts in the, in the hot weather. Uh, every private contracting crew you go by, even pavers and people you would think would have long pants on are all in shorts. So it does make my guys kind of sit back and say, wait a minute, how come we're stuck in long pants all the time and we're we got to do this when everybody around us is in shorts. So I at least entertain the discussion. Um, getting together and talking to a local government center uh, to see if it was an insurance requirement, they view it as personal protective equipment. So they, in their mind, uh, long pants are just like safety glasses and every other piece of personal protective equipment. It is task specific. If you're doing a task that you need long pants to protect your legs, then you should wear long pants. Uh, but if you're doing traffic detail and you're standing out with a paddle or you're doing, you know, whatever other detail where you're just out there in the sun but you're not, you don't necessarily need the protection on your legs, there's no insurance issue that would dictate making the guys wear jeans or long pants. Um, so we did come across this um, heat index thing. We wanted, I, I didn't want to just go along with it blanket approval, you can wear shorts whenever you feel like wearing shorts. Um, I, I felt like it needed to be based in in a health issue and in a, in a, uh, a safety, you know, keep safety first and foremost. So what I've put together here, I think, is a balance. It protects the employees when they need to be protected and it also recognizes that um, when you're in extreme heat, you do need to make some, some uh, changes and, and recognize that um, that heat is something we have to deal with also. So by tying it to the National Weather Service heat index, I feel like we've at least kind of set a, there's a guide there, there's a, a, a baseline mm -hmm. and um, 
you know, the guys would have to have a pair of long pants in the event, say we had a, a thunderstorm that hit quick and we had trees down, they'd have to go back to the shop to get chainsaws anyway. Well, while you're back there, put your long pants on because we're going to be out cutting trees. Uh, so they'd have to have long pants available uh, at the work site if they had to change. And of course, uh, we're also dictating what kind of shorts they can wear. I don't want to have them look like a bunch of ragtag guys out for a run. Carl, you uh, referenced that the uh, shorts would be allowed if the heat index reaches the caution level. And by the NOAA weather chart here, uh, the caution level essentially kicks in at 80 degrees. Well, with a relative humidity of 40, which in the summertime in New England probably would never happen. Okay. So it's That's what I wanted you to Yeah, it's Yeah, it's more like I think our usual. You would, you would really be monitoring the relative humidity. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's more like the mid-80s with the normal humidity conditions that we'd see around here. You're talking the mid-80s. Thank you. Carl, I think on uh, 1.2, where you re you're um, referring to 1.6 and 1.7, down at the bottom, it, should that be oh, 1.6? Yes. It should. Thank you, Mick. 1.7 should be numbered 1.6. Right. Okay. That was, yeah. that was my question, too. Yeah. And then 1.7, you single out um, trash and recycling drivers. Is that only during those heat index days? You know, the uh, I have an employee there that regularly wears shorts now. So when I first wrote this, I didn't have that in there. And then, of course, that individual, it was pointed out that, hey, you know, why are you taking away my shorts? And I point out that you're not supposed to wear shorts. But from what I understand, even, and I've, I've never spent 10 hours riding around in a cab or one of those trucks, but from what I understand, uh, on really hot days, the air conditioning helps but it, it's still pretty warm in the cabs of those trucks. Um, so it, it, it w the intent is, yes, it kicks in with the heat index, just like the other ones, but that's why those guys are singled out, because uh, one could argue that that's not a job where you need, you know, just on the surface, it doesn't seem like a job where you need them, but from what I understand, it's pretty warm in those cabs. But this policy affects all Department of Public Works employees. Right. So they wouldn't be covered by that statement? By? So in other words, your purpose oh, it, with the heat index is all Department of Public Works employees, which I would assume would be everybody that works for DPW. Yeah, but actually, you, you single out. You could make that case. Would it apply to everyone then? Well, oh, you know what statement it is? It's where it says shorts will only be allowed to be worn if employees are working out of doors for prolonged periods and not engaged in. Right. So that I follow. Okay. That's why we added it. Mm -hmm. Like a motion. Yeah. Yeah. For discussion. That's uh, fine. Thanks. Motion to uh, accept the uh, clothing policy as we've discussed here this evening. Second. Any further discussion? I have one reservation. I've seen some of these guys' legs, not just. Uh, <laughs> 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 hey, you should read that up. <laughs> okay. With that exception, <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining? Unanimous. Um, do you want. Uh, we kind of discussed the engineer. That was the only other thing I wanted to talk about tonight. Is that. We have that scheduled as a non-public right. next. Okay. We could, uh, again, I'm, I, I'm not in favor of a temporary employee. I, I would just as soon try to see it parceled out. Or if it is going to be a temporary employee, I'd like to see it whittled down to a project or projects, very specific. And this is the length of time that we anticipate it to take, and that's all they're going to work on. Um, and then at the end of that period, the, it's over. But I'm just concerned. I mean, if something happens, we own this person. They get hurt, or I mean, they're an employee. Mm. And not, you know, after all our discussions, I, I don't think we should be bringing on more employees at this point. I just, I'm sure there's other departments out there that have a lot of work, and they're going to make the same case, or could make the same case. So, not in favor.
favor. Are we ready for the non public one? Was there something else? I didn't have anything else. Then take a break to do that? To go to, we'll do non public and then come back into public? Yeah. We have it on the agenda, 645, 648. Motion to go into the non public. Under uh, RSA 91A colon 3, to uh, subject B, hiring, and D for land. So you want both separate? We do that. Uh, we can do land. Yeah, we yeah. can do land later. Land later, okay. Yeah. So for, be for hiring, colon B. Eh? Thank you. Is there a second? One second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, roll call. Yes. 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 Unanimous. Okay, we're the non public for a few minutes and then we will return. Back to public. So with that, um, do we have a motion? What's the next item on the agenda? Motion on the non-public. Right, motion on the non-public. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I was thinking of something else. That's all right. You're uh, allowed to do that. I would make a motion to um, place a temp hire in DPW to accomplish engineering planning, requiring an, a professional engineer's license uh, for this position to start next week and end at the end of September. Is there a second? No second. Any discussion? Um, you know, I'll, I'll support this because of the, the set time frame and the okay. not to exceed that uh, a dollar. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstaining, it's unanimous. Next item is town administrator's report. Do you, Unless do, we do you want to skip my report right now since you have was, people was, here for gonna, old business? I, I was I was assuming that that's that's what they were here for. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, I mean, it's not every week that we have you know an enthusiastic group that comes down just to watch us. <laughs> I mean, you're always welcome. <laughs> you know, I see uh, you know Parks and Rec director here. I see a uh, mm -hmm. planner here. You know, I know he likes to spend long nights at the planning board meeting so yeah. he probably has nothing else better to do and <laughs> if we put them at we the have end another they commissioner the here Campbell and we have it's okay uh, with that uh, old business is that what we're going to be doing this Sunday yes sir. okay with that uh, you have an item for old business yes I do and uh, I'd like to uh, put some PowerPoint slides on the wall mr. chairman uh, are you telling me to move out of the way I am okay. <laughs> This is fine. This is fine. Is that okay for you guys? Can I keep it up? I can see it. Turn that one off. This one? Yeah. It's okay. going to be turn too bright. That for that's off. the one I wanted to turn, turn off. Turn that one on. Is that good, Andrew? Yeah, thank you. All right, good. That's where it worked great. And Brian did it. Back on the 1st of June, we entered a discussion on what when would be the appropriate time to hand off continuing maintenance responsibility for the Gulf Sound Rail Trail to the Park Department. I asked for essentially a little time out on that dis discussion to bring the Parks Commission up to speed with everything that's been um, done uh, for the development of the rail trail, what is in work, and therefore what is left to be done, just so that they have all the background information on the rail trail as and can participate in our discussion for their uh, park department responsibilities. I did back. I did brief the uh, commission on the uh, 21st of July. 
and consequently uh, they're in attendance tonight to participate in that discussion. Uh, and the issue is when does the Park and Rec Department accept responsibility for uh, maintenance of the trail, uh, complete of sections, and so that there perhaps would be a budgetary responsibility there and they can appropriately prepare their budgets. I'm going to put a recommendation on the table right now that um, they'll be, they, for sake of a discussion to kick off the briefing and, and keep this in mind as I go through the other slides, that one milestone would be uh, the point where the TE grant is completed. And we would estimate if, that pro if that's a 2011 project, uh, then the appropriate time would be the budget year starting in January 2012. Of course, and as, as I'll show you in the few other slides, there are significant sections that are yet to be contracted to be upgraded. My overview is simply, this is where the trail is. Uh, panel one up at the top starts at the uh, Piscataquag River in the village, goes eastwards, and I show it covering over panels two, three, and four. Uh, significant information to take off this view graph is the town purchased 4.8 miles of rail parcels in 2004 using um, $360,000 of uh, transportation enhancement grant money plus a match made by the town. There are three tenths of a mile that's on East Union Street that shows on panel one and uh, the former rail parcel at that location was purchased years before the town had a concept of a rail trail. Another three-tenths of a mile is on a sore easement on the left and right. That shows on panel two. It's on the left and right of uh, the Shell Station. It's a 25-foot wide uh, sore easement, and the rail trail runs over that easement. And uh, finally, uh, there is one-tenth of the mile. that It's on a negotiated easement that was part of the uh, plans for the development of the Shell Station, and we show that as running at the rear edge of their property line. There was a, a survey done and property markers were put in in 2008. This board approved a development plan also in 2008. We've accomplished four years of uh, projects. Uh, uh, I show here we had four years of recreational trails program grants from the New Hampshire Bureau of Trails, uh, upgrading certain portions of trail to put a culvert in. Uh, in 2009 money and 2010 money to uh, provide an access onto the trail from uh, Surrett Park and uh, finish uh, as panel four shows in the lower right finishing last 200 yards of trail surface connecting to the Manchester line. Uh, significant information to take away from this view graph. All the, the financing that is has been done or is in, in place to be spent adds up to $536,000. And of course, 80% of that is uh, been grants. The other amount is either uh, the, like on the TE grant, the 80,000 is green cash. On the other situations uh, for the matching with the recreational trails program, that has been in lieu of uh, real dollars, has been contribution of volunteer hours and other donations that spend towards the development of the rail trail. That has built 1.375 miles, uh, one and three quarter miles of trail. So what sections remain to be improved? Well, it adds up to 3.3 uh, three and three quarter miles. I've, uh, for the sake of this discussion, I only broke them down into 15 sec sections. Um, I'm starting to get into a little warm water here. I don't want to take a lot of time at this board to hash why each section is important and all the engineering aspects of these 15 sections. I simply want you to get an impression that there's a little over three and a half miles that are yet to be fully upgraded to meet the specifications of our development plan. A vast majority of that three and a half miles is walkable today. There's a few sections that have some barriers um, with uh, slopes uh, of in that three and a half miles. But uh, 
this i don't want to give the impression from this briefing that it's the trail is not usable well it is and as you review these slides in the future it's a good reference i simply have described some engineering work that has to be done for the various sections the vast majority of it is to raise the trail surface if it's been continually wet install the proper trail surface which is knit pack ten feet wide with shoulders of loam and grass three three feet on either side and restore drainage that has been filled in through the years with the abandonment of the rail line various other sections require unique engineering issues fence putting up fencing or a berm in a particular place to separate the the rail trail from the busy highway putting in ball yards at public road crossings and following what if I we were to go out for bid I know the town engineer on the left has a list of items that formulate what would be components of a bid I followed the same methodology here my unit pricing for that work is compatible with what the town engineer would use this year if the this was a project to be let this year and the rest is simply figuring out what the quantities of work would be the significant thing to bring away from this slide is that it's three hundred and thirty three thousand dollars if this was a contract to be finished this year for the remaining three point three and three quarter miles it's in the realm of three hundred thirty three thousand dollars and my last slide is this how would you accomplish building those fifteen sections well you you would have one possible completion sequence I show on the left there's perhaps dozens of different sequences of completing those fifteen sections depending on where your priorities would be if we did business as usual and we depend upon grants from the New Hampshire Trails Bureau and we would get maybe thirty or in the future you know well right now twenty five thousand dollars a year perhaps in the future would go up maybe thirty thousand dollars a year we're looking at fourteen years to actually accomplish the building of the trail and over that fourteen years of course the cost of construction is going to go up and uh, I used the five percent number and it possibly the future dollar worth of all that construction would be just shy of a half million dollars I show four hundred ninety thousand dollars a problem we have with the future trails grant trails barrel grants is how do we achieve a twenty percent match up to now like I've told you it's been with volunteer hours in in lieu of what the the worth of those hours are would be we have run out of easy jobs to accumulate three hundred or four hundred hours of volunteer labor the issue will be for the town is how to achieve a twenty percent match we're not here to discuss how to do that this evening I just want to present the issue to you that it it may be a problem if we have to come up with five to six thousand dollars every year of cash money the match with the trails bureau grant we're not quite there yet but it will be an issue in the future I do show an option too and that's at some point in the future we may be comfortable with a single project to complete the whole trail and that would of course we be an article all to itself at a future warrant an option three is we would keep our ears to the grindstone and and be alert to a federal transportation enhancement grant whenever that next round would be and we don't know that and we would make an application and uh, you know, stand in line for uh, hoping that would be approved so you know I've given you more information you never wanted to know but where we have been what's in work and what the future looks like for the development of the trail and the future is all funding dependent whether you do it over 14 years or you do it
quickly, you know, in one year. Um, all this is to give, give you the same information that I presented to the Park Commission and the Park Department to facilitate that discussion. When do you want the Park Department to have responsibility for maintenance of the completed sections? So, and any, <coughs> any questions for that? I just, that was information you can certainly keep in your hip pocket uh, as part of our uh, handouts. I have any questions at table? This is my second time, so I'm pretty, pretty, pretty understanding of this one. But we didn't have the PowerPoint presentation the last time. No, we just had the handout. Looks much better on screen. And a much smaller version. Yeah. Well, anything you wanted to discuss on that? Well, uh, we started this discussion on uh, 1 June. Uh, Selectman Fournier mm -hmm. brought up the subject of uh, what would be the appropriate time for the Park Department to initiate their responsibility, and, and accordingly they would perhaps want to have a budgetary responsibility there too. So I'll just leave it at that. and. Uh, my, my going in recommendation for this board is that they would start in January of 2012. That just, to me, that affords them one year of grace to uh, coordinate what they need to do maintenance, what's the scope of that maintenance. Um, I anticipate they'll be relying on volunteers as they are, as the town is presently. How did the Parks and Rec Commission, did you make that recommendation to the commission? Yes, I did. And how was that received? Um, Anybody chairman here? Um, or we can. Both, 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 both of you, come up, please come up. We're going through these. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All good, Rick. All good. Always ready. Um, I think. W would you introduce yourselves because you are on TV? Oh, sure. Uh, Rick Wilhelmy, Parks and Recreation Director. And Mark Campbell, Chair of the Parks and Rec Commission. So, to a answer your question, how did. How did the Parks and Rec Commission. Um, respond. Respond to the recommendation to start budgeting for the maintenance of the trail and take over responsibility on January 1st, 2012? There, there are some real concerns and some questions. Um, about uh, you know when we would possibly do it, um, how much would we have to oversee it, uh, what aspects would we have to oversee, you know what what um, you know what's the big ramification piece of it, what's the liability aspect of it, um, you know would it be parts and rec, would it be DPW, would it be a shared um, issue, I mean so there's a lot of questions. Um, about this, obviously, a, a, a big concern was the budgetary piece. You know that uh, we're already up against the tight budget as it is, and then to now bring that apart on our budget—that um, that was a concern. Yeah, if I can add to that, I mean, it's 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 all very positive, um, and and I think the the commission is very positive about taking it on, but there are some situations and more budgetary things that has to be brought up. Um, but we'd be more than happy to take this on. But there, the reality is it comes down to dollars. Mm -hmm. um, and whether it's going to be Parks and Rec, DPW, police, fire, whomever it is, it's going to be dollars coming from a fund, from one big till. And we'd be happy to take it on, but we got to make sure we do it in the right way. And the shared resources might be the way to do it. Nick, Nick, you had a question? Well, not a question, just a comment, because I agree with what you're saying. I think we're going about it in a reverse method. I mean, we, what is involved in the maintenance? What materials, what amount of time, what equipment will be required? Um, it's a wonderful project. There are a lot of dedicated people, but we're 
don't have our hands around what is going to be the additional cost we're looking at reducing next year's budget by ten percent by you know potentially reducing services yet you know we don't have an idea of what the the impact of maintaining this trail system is going to be and i think we need to have those that information what what effect on the budget will it be manpower wise equipment wise right and i think though also in line with that a couple of issues that they raised as far as you know maintenance dpw what's involved uh, preliminary discussion we had about this quite a while ago was not knowing what the design of the trail is what knowing the surface it's hard for any department to try to kind kind of try to figure out what's going to be required so I mean we had a preliminary plan that showed some different types of generic material but we never had uh, we, we don't have uh, specific design of the enti entire trail uh, laid out as as far as as uh, the exact materials I, I don't believe I, I would I would disagree okay I, with the development plan that this board approved in 2008 is specific we are having a 10 foot wide surface and it's knit pack you know, crushed stone surface okay we, when that plan was in development, I felt the Rail Trail Development Committee wanted to stay away from um, immediately going to asphalt surface because that's a totally n a, an, another expense that we wanted to stay away from for the immediate time frame. This community might be favorable towards that in six, seven, eight years. I don't know. But right now, we are putting a surface in place that is knit back. Um, and you know it's considerably maintenance if it's if the drainage is being taken care of as the surface is being improved and so uh, and you've seen the section from Moose Club Park Road towards the town line a little over a half mile um, that's essentially what we will put in place for the uh, for the rest of the trail that section has been in place for two years there's been no need for any construction equipment to be down there to reshape the surface or otherwise take care of problems. If the drainage is done properly, it's maintenance free for a number of years. We did talk about a few issues, um, you know, like vandalism, um, trash, upkeep, um, patrolling of it to, to maintain some safety of it. I mean, there are already issues there now. I mean, for the most part, the trail is accessible some parts you have to be really good off-road bike person to get through some of the sections but it's accessible now and, and quite a few people do use it but there's still a few concerns you know it's it's uh, almost a double-edged sword in a way um, because this is if I remember correctly from our conversation um, the other night the longest private or town owned um, rail trail in the state at what is it four five miles five five point five point two miles and so it's the longest which is great it's an awesome recreation piece for our town but the the double-edged sword of that is it's also five point five miles of upkeep and oversight so you know it, it's a on one hand it's a great resource to have in our town because we have many natural resources like that um, but it does bring some things that we have to address it's not that we can't do it but we just um, have to be smart about it and um, you know see if this truly is something that the town is really going to push because it you know inevitably it's the tax dollars and if that's what they want you know then we move forward and find a way to to work together as a whole entity to figure it out that, as, as I think the feeling you're going to get is we're very proud and we're very excited to do it but it comes down to that dollar question and that's that's unfortunately the reality and we all have to be fiscally minded in every department and we have to think of that first and that that's one of the gaps we're ready we, we'd love to do it but there will be some responsibility behind it all right but on the, and in that same token has there been any discussion of how um, how are you going to be able to travel uh, 
the trail? I mean, obviously. For cleanup, you mean? Well, yeah, for whatever, for uh, inspection, There's, you know. Uh, you're, you're, going, you're making some very good points. I mean, this was kind of given to us on the 21st, which was Wednesday, right. this past Wednesday. Um, there are a lot of things that we really probably do need to look at dollar-wise, like Nick is saying, more specific of what is the true expenditures. You need to do our homework and find out what that would be and then make a more logical decision on it. But I'm, I'm just coming forth right now. I think this is kind of like all new, and okay. we're all about it. We, let's do this. Sure. Okay? okay. But, but we got to look yes. at Yes, and what you've said, uh, Rick, is, is correct. I think that's why I'm suggesting uh, January 2012. Right. I'm going to, you know, trust that there's uh, whatever maintenance issues might crop up in 2011. The volunteer organization will be able to tackle those. Um, I don't anticipate any serious issues that would require uh, DPW to step in, you know, something because we have contracts in place for development of the trail but not maintenance. And I, I don't anticipate any serious maintenance issues requiring their facilities. Um, that affords this, – this is like develop – you're going to have an infrastructure placed in your lap sooner or later. It's like – forget the rail trail. It could be two swimming pools and five tennis courts. That somebody has donated to the town. That'd be awesome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or ball fields. <laughs> And they're going to be part of your infrastructure sooner or later. So I'm, I'm suggesting do your prep work in 2011 and think about that budgetary responsibility for January 2012. I agree. And I, that's exactly what we have to do. I mean, it's kind of strange the way this is rolling, rolling along here. And um, totally we have 12 months plus time to figure out a lot of things. Absolutely. With the, with the TE grant construction completed, uh, technically one-third of the trail is brought up to specification standards. Um, there are then only a couple hundred feet out of all the three and a half miles after that that has some um, off-road challenges. And, and <laughs> they could be tackled uh, through uh, the grants in the future years. There's vehicles, I understand. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm just making it aware that Boils down to dollars. Yeah. Also, though, along that line, uh, some of the things that need to be discussed um, is how how are is your department and your employee or the volunteers? I like how you said employee. Employee. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, you're, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, Going to be able to access that. I mean, realistically, let's say twice a week or once a week. Are you going to do a patrol on that? Or are you going to check, go along, pick up trash? Uh, if that's the case, how are you going to do that? What type of vehicle? Is it going to be like a golf court, car, uh, cart? If that's the case, um, how are you going to be able to access it? Because there are places that we place boulders to keep uh, vehicles out, yet uh, it has to be able for you to access this. How are we going to be able to access this for uh, police? Let's say there's something happens. Doesn't the final design have um, bollards, bollards instead of Correct. removable bollards instead of boulders? Yeah. I think that, that was Okay, uh, I'm just saying we're, all of this. We're, the boulders are there right now because we're trying to get the community in the mindset to keep those vehicles off the trail. You know, once again, we uh, maybe the message is getting out there. Well, the right, I, I, I understand, uh, and I understand that you're picking a date of 2012, but there's also the reality that when that date comes that the trail may not be 100% complete, and there might be places that still have boulders, but how are we going to maintain this? How are we going to be flexible and be able to have your department accomplish this and work and have the flexibility of being able to, to work with, it would be great if somebody said, you know what, I'm, gonna, I'm donating this rail trail, it's all complete to the town. I mean, when you say somebody's gonna donate pools to the Parks and Rec, well, that's fine. They already have two pools in their infrastructure. They have the equipment, they have the experience of how to maintain the pools, what chemicals to use, so it's just a routine. This is a completely different animal that they have to, that they have to incorporate everything in and, and work and be flexible, Steve. 
I have no no doubt in my mind that Rick would be able to maintain and look out after the trail. I think what Rick is expressing is that, especially, and we all know it's budget season, we've all seen the Parks and Rec budget every year, and it's the leanest, tightest budget mm -hmm. there is. And he's looking for the idea of, from limited resources, how do you expand to take on the additional resource? And I think what, 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 what I'm understanding from Rick here is that, yes, it belongs probably in Parks and Rec, okay? Is he gonna have to work with other departments such as DPW if there's if there's something that large needs to be done? Is he gonna have to work with the police department for policing? Absolutely. But somewhere along the line, towards these 12 months and this time's coming, there will have, I mean, the reality is, is that it, it's a large project. Mm -hmm. It's a large area just for maintenance. It, it won't be absorbed within the budget. And that's just something that you know, maybe we have to think of as a board how we go forward, but it, mm -hmm. it won't be absorbed. He, he won't be able to absorb it, and I don't see it being absorbed I in the know. DPW, I mean, excuse me, the uh, Parks and Rec budget as it sits. We're giving him a new infrastructure responsibility, and that's growth. And, and, and along with it, there will have to be resources somewhere along the line. Let's see if I could, and I think the biggest resources is going to be manpower. I mean, we have two pool facilities. In the summertime, we have lawns to cut. We have a lot of area to take care of. We've now added taking care of the uh, Glen Lake waterfront to your plate. And now someone's going to have to take care of the rail trail. I'm not even talking about equipment or you know, maybe fixing the surface. Your department of one employee, or you have three, but one person who does it's out there to, to do all of that hands-on work. And it's going to require resources, that, that also resources. That's also mountain-based pond as well. Just want to get that in there too. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> well, we're, we're, I mean, we're excited. We want to do this. But it's, it just has to be known. There's going to be expenditures. And this is my first year going through this whole budget process. And, you know, 10% you know, of nothing is nothing. So now you're going to take on another another project and in infrastructure. Great idea, but you got to throw a bone. We were thinking of maybe something. we were thinking of people could sponsor a half a mile. No, it's just the. Well, well, but I mean, you laugh. Possibility. Oh, but, and I laugh saying that, it's, but there, there is are, I, I, there's ways to do it. Obviously, it, but and I and I and I'm sure that the Rails to Trail Committee will continue to be there. I th I think as it grows, you I think you, there will be some creative ideas such as that where we work in conjunction with. With, 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 priv with private companies and also with, with people who want to volunteer, but there will be a, some type of resource that will be needed. But I mean, honestly, we'll look for those creative ways, but also there'll be other, there's gonna be some parts where there's just dollars tied to it, and we'll have to look for that. And Gosstown's been great um, historically for the volunteer. Obviously, the Rails to Trail has been tremendous in, in getting this started and then developing the third of the trail at this point and all the extra work that they've done. So, um, you know, we, we realize that there are entities out there that would be able to partner with us in this. But again, you know, just, it, it, I guess it's good that we're looking at the 2012 year. Um, it does give us some time, but it, it, it will make a financial impact. But I think in the end, um, the amount of impact it'll have on the town, especially one of the things we did last year was the survey of the town. And one of the things they said was, to be able to utilize more of our resources in town. This is a great, great resource to have. And so to us, it just fits in with our plan um, to develop for the town. It, it's great. With, with the obesity that's happening in our country, I mean, you see it any, everywhere you, you look and, and the um, ailments that go along with it, that this is right here in our backyard. It's a great way for us to enjoy the outdoors, get great exercise, spend more time with our families, so we, we're all for it. Um, I guess we're just, you know, it's been enough said. It, there is going to be a budgetary piece to this. Yeah. How much? Don't know. But that is something to, to be expected. And I, I'd also like to say, you know, the Rails Trail Committee, they're a phenomenal job. They, I mean, they should, there should be a lot of gratitude given to every one of those people, those volunteers. It's enormous what they have done. And we owe it to all of them to keep it going. I'd like to uh, acknowledge that the president of the Friends of the Rail Trail is in the audience this evening, uh, Lowe Von Rubin, and he's been in that capacity for as long as I can remember, so <laughs> thank you, Lowe. 
Anything from us? I, I, any other questions or comments? No, I don't know. We'll, we'll you know, look forward to working with you on it. Uh, you know, like you say, it's going to be uh, it's going to be something new for all of us. But uh, you know, I'm sure we'll get through it. And uh, as you go through with that, you'll probably. Uh, well, I guess my my suggestion probably too is as Rick, when you have staff meetings with the town administrator. There are going to be issues, you know, that come up that you're going to have to have some discussion with some of the other departments, and maybe there's uh, some way there if it uh, involves three departments, maybe it could be broken out that way in three, three separate budgets. A portion of it that might up. I mean, I think ways. collaboration is the way to go, and that's yeah. what it is. Whether it's internal collaboration, external collaboration, it's how we get things done. It's mm -hmm. how we have to get things done. So you're absolutely right. Okay. Anything else? If not, we'll just look forward to working with you. And thanks for the great job. Thank, Thank you. you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I'd like to uh, someone said it was a difficult part because I rode the whole trail. I like to think that I did a difficult part. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's very rideable. It's very rideable. Yeah. It's Thank even you. even that that the, the surfaces the, that rock cut. Uh, if you do it in a wintertime snowshoe, when it's nice because you have snow on there, so you don't have to worry about the surface. And that's really an awesome part of the trail. I mean, I don't know how many people have gone to that portion. I, uh, I think it's what you call the rock cut, where it's actually cut, blasted down through into the bed. And that's really an awesome part of the trail, especially in wintertime. Ninety-nine percent of the trail, had, when it was built back in 1850s, it was truckloads or maybe rail cars load of soil to make a raised bed above the natural terrain. But there was one section by Lynchfield Park Road that, that is, uh, excuse me, not from Lynchfield Park, that is a rock cut, right? blasted out. You're actually in it and you're looking up at the, and in wintertime it's it's an awesome place with the, I mean, you get a nice day and the water is, it's, it's you got water going through there, it's, it's just awesome. So anyway, Good. with that, anything else on this issue? Thank you for your support. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Uh, let's see. We got uh, back to the town administrator's report for the third time. Okay. I think I was at the consensus folder. We have AP warrants, employee status report now. Or do we want to keep it plural? Yeah, you can authorize signature in both. We didn't do a vote report. No, we didn't. No, no we, we didn't, didn't do, do a vote. No, we didn't do any motions on, no, no. on, right. on that except for uh, that one issue. Right. And an event permit application. Question on that. Were we waiting for information on, on the event permit? There was a oh, no. We received we it. We got it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. At the time that was printed, no, but I got that. Okay. So we need a motion on the consensus folder. So moved. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. The assessor recommends uh, intent of timber cut map six, lot 54, veterans tax credit. Map 24, lot 15A2, and the land use change tax lien release, and map 5, lot 39, and map 27, lot 9. Motion to accept the assessor's recommendations. Second that. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, Attorney Jesha has completed the legal resolutions for the layout of Parsons Drive and sent them to the resident's attorney. There are two resolutions, one for the conditional layout of Parsons Drive as a public road and the other to establish a betterment assessment for the layout. Following your approval, the betterment bills will be sent to the property owners. Motion is needed. I have a question on that. Um, I'm looking through there. I'm pretty sure that it's in there, but I just want to double check the portion for the uh, right of way that ended the cul-de-sac. Yes. That's all uh, yep. because it is mentioned in there. I just wanted to make sure that everything on that, um, that's been run by Public Works and all the yes. planning and everybody, so that's Public Works, yes, and and I looked it over. Okay, but it yep. conforms what we need. With for the, the, yeah, for the they plan. have the plan with that section marked out. Yes. Right. Yep. Okay. Yep. Very good. Motion so to approve the resolutions related to Parsons Drive. Is there a second? I second. Thank you. <laughs> I second the motion. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? It's unanimous. Thank you. You also have in your packet at tab 6B the tax collector's advance notice of tax deeding. In accordance with state law, she submits this at this time every year. Mm -hmm. um, typically, we wait until the re redemption deadline to inspect any of these properties as the list seems to shorten by that time. And 
our work lesson. <laughs> so you need a motion? Yes. Uh, no, actually, uh, it's just. Not at this point. Not okay. at this point, right. right. Okay. Not till the redemption deadline. It's just the FYI, basically? Exactly. Okay. 2011-2010 uh, legislative process. Enclosed, you will find the correspondence from NHMA regarding recommendations for the next legislative session. It's important to note that the NHMA deadline is August 13th, 2010, for any new items to be introduced as floor policies. So when you have a chance, you can review that, and if there's any other legislation you, as a board, want to put forward, um, you'd have to do that by August 13th. Energy inventory. Uh, I, um, excuse me on that one point. I'm going to remind the uh, the chair of our board, uh, Mr. Selectman Gross, that uh, he had a, a long dialogue concerning dog licensing fees and what's the uh, maybe a better law could be written at the state level, and that's exactly what this is trying to help out, right? Right. So maybe that's an opportunity for him to put something in writing on that. But it might be uh, actually. Um, on something like that, the best thing to do would be get a hold of the state reps and have the state reps work together to get that in and then have the municipal association support, support it mm -hmm. rather than have it trying to come okay. from the municipal association. That's good. At this Thank point, you. yeah, because that would take a while. Yeah. Um, just follow up on June 21st. If you remember, James Veo uh, provided the board with the energy inventory right. on all municipal buildings and the fleet. And he said that Tobias from Cool Air, Clean Planet, would be back in touch with us to make his recommendation on which building we would see the most savings in if we did an energy audit. And he feels that it's the Penardville Fire Station that we should focus on for the energy audit. And he's just waiting for your okay to go forward with that. Again, this is all grant funded, so there's no cost to the town. Okay. So do you need a motion? Yes. To authorize an energy audit for station 19. Is there a second? Second. All in discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. And just for an FYI, um, cemetery trustees will meet with the Board of Selectmen next week to discuss future planning for cemetery. Also, next week, there will be an oath of office for and reception for a new police officer that will be sworn in. Um, the only other thing I had for public session was that. Um, I've been in contact with the mayor's aide. August 11th at 5.30 at City Hall in Manchester is available uh, to meet regarding the trestle. Now, if more than two of you are going to meet, then we will have to post it as a meeting. I, I would pleasure? recommend, since I am the uh, board's representative for the Rail Trail Committee, that I would like to attend that session. And uh, Selectman Fournier has a a stake in this game, and, and he would be a, a good representative. I have no problem going. Be it where I am located, though, it might not, it might, maybe at this point in time, it should be someone joining Mr. Pierce. But if, if, if the board doesn't have a problem, I'll gladly go. You, you, but being where it directly relates to me somewhere down the road, that, you know, I'm just saying, it, I'm looking for where, where the board is comfortable. And with when that. is this? August 5th? August 11th. August 11th. Wednesday. Well, it's not something that we have to have a decision. No, nope, you can tonight. think about it. All right, so maybe I'd just like to get, because she would like to firm up yeah. the mayor's schedule. Well, so. what I was, well, what I was going to suggest is. confirm that you have one attendee. Okay. I would like. But what I was going to suggest is that in the packets that are coming up, put it in the packet so that okay. we can have so it. Okay. So I will tell her though August 11th someone will be yeah. there. Okay. Mm -hmm. We just don't know. Somebody who will be. Okay. Very good. That's all I had for public session. Okay. Um, new business. We don't old business. At this I. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's new business or not. Did we post for Parks and Rec yet? The mm. opening? Yes. Yes. On the, uh, if you go to the town's website. You can tell I didn't go to there. Okay. Um, there's a listing of all committee openings, okay. vacancies right now. And how long is that posting open for? It's been up since July 20th. And it closed, uh, is there a closing date? 
No, but I believe um, Rick talked to me today and he'd like to close it um, before the next meeting. So at the next meeting, they can have the uh, people attend okay. in August and then they can make their decision. Thank you. It's under volunteer opportunities on the homepage. And any other new business? Well, it's still under old comment. No, no, new business. Oh, okay, no, no new business. So if there's no new business, we'll go back and we'll, we'll finish up with old business. Thank you. Go right ahead. Just an update, if we could, um, I was going to ask our public works director, um, but I didn't realize he was leaving after the non-public. Could we get an update on the no parking signs on Prospect Street? as well as the sidewalk repair on East Union timeline when those we would expect those to be I know they have a full plate but yeah. I'll take advantage of you uh, put off a light bulb in my my head uh, Sue I would like an update on the initiative I presented perhaps two months ago that there would be uh, town line signs installed at the uh, public roads coming into this town that are missing those signs that was a budgetary issue, I believe? It, it was. It would be of some cost mm -hmm. if you, you know, considering $100 per the sign. Other, the other thing along with that, uh, when was the last time we replaced any of those signs? That's, so, that's a good point. Um, There's also EDCs working on signs as you come off 114. Who's on EDC? Well, when it was proposed at the last meeting. I think they want to go forward. I think they're looking for something that be completed by the, the 250th, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's just very preliminary conversation. The board has said that would be fine. So I think we're going to start going towards that planning stage. Okay, and we also, the, I know the signs are on order for Prospect Street and also the signs are on order um, for the yield right away on Chattel and Cove. Mm -hmm. Those are all on order. Those are the ones that we uh, have a public hearing on? Yes. Right. Okay. Nick? Something that just came to my mind tonight as we were looking at the, the presentation, and I think because it was the conversation we also had last week regarding the pools, and I don't know if we can get clarification, but the TE grant, my understanding we're using impact fees. Yes. yes. And the purpose is trail improvements. Can we do that? I guess is my question. Where we're not expanding due to growth. It's actually trail development. Okay. It's not. We're not. Yeah. It's well, my fine, understanding fine is the point, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, we are developing a trail. You are, and that's why it was seen that impact fees would be appropriate. Okay, and that's the reason I asked is because tonight I thought we heard that the trail is usable, but we're improving it. I see this all as part of the master plan to develop it. Okay. It was just because I know we've talked about the pools and not being able to improve mm -hmm. the pools or repair the pools, but right. it has to be expansion. Right. We're expanding a new park in town, and it's a five-mile corridor. Well, I, I think what it might be, um, it might be viewed as maintenance or repairs, one aspect. And if you take something and you you develop it for the first time as development that's not right. the maintenance repair but if you get to a section let's say once you develop it mm -hmm. the sections that were uh, completed that David pointed out that were in there so let's say something happened let's say there was a washout you could not use that money because that's basically a repair you've already right. developed it right. and this is as a long as we're clear with that because I don't want to yeah. Actually, Steve yeah. Griffin had looked into that before when he was with us because this came up last year, and he was the one that recommended impact uh, fees be used. It was appropriate use because we were developing a trail. Thank you. Any other old business? And I will go to old business here regarding the, the Roy Pool, and I'm not sure who can assist with this, and I don't know if it's a possibility regarding grants that because. That, though that pool's in Gosstown, it's used for the area regarding the in the Pinar Valley regarding those people in Manchester, et cetera. And there was the thought process of from a grant and would it be possible to apply for a grant and would it be subject to income versus for the reality of the that the people that do use it there that it is that there is a you know, there could be an income based piece that might assist in grants. Who 
who would handle that for us or could we handle that? Parks and Rec Commission would be looking into any grants for that purpose. Um, I know typically there's very few grants for repairs. It's for new items. Yeah, or well, this might be at new item. This might be at the, at the point of it's extended its life over 40 years. Yeah, but I think that's a replacement. Um, Does that change? I mean, I guess what I'm saying is that from sometimes when you get into these grants uh, or some of these things that you can apply for, it takes someone who know, would know how, within knowing the regs, knowing how to read the regs. Right. Do we have anyone can, that can assist in that then? Um, Rick is using his listserv for Parks and Rec directors in the state. Okay. And trying to access that information, what's available for that purpose. Right. He also has a state agency um, that he can contact for Parks and Recreation purposes. Okay. Okay. Anything else on the whole business? If not, we'll move on to committee reports. Library trustees is not here, right? Parks and Rec. You heard it all today, Mr. We've Pierce. Gave us all, a great huh? report on. Uh, okay. Gave us uh, a great report on the uh, rails trail. That's fine. As far as planning board, there was a, uh, a completeness review and subdivision review hearing for a proposed lot line adjustment, and the board voted that the project didn't have a regional impact, and that uh, they they uh, accepted it, and they uh, uh, as complete. Um, forwarded to a public hearing on August 12th and uh, one of the things that came up with this uh, because of the way the process that we we normally go through this was uh, noticed as a complete as, as a review uh, and actually this is pretty much a straightforward application and uh, because of the fact of the way it was noticed we couldn't do a final on it so it has to be so those are some of the things that uh, Brian uh, Rose, the planner, is also looking into for certain things like this, so we could do it expedited, uh, expedited, and get it through the process a little bit faster. Uh, the board also heard uh, uh, more on the Fournia landscaping uh, application, and that was uh, that was uh, continued to September 9th, and also the. Uh, Briar Woods application, uh, yield plan uh, was modified uh, to 17 lots on that, and uh, they uh, voted to uh, continue that to September 9th, and that was the planning board. Oh, I'm sorry, I do want to jump back to Parks and Rec after if we could. Well, I don't know. We already finished that. You said that you <laughs> we heard it all. I we don't want to hear anymore. I was anymore. just thinking of the rails. That's trails okay. Collected. I think uh, the other thing of, of, of note was there was a lot of conversation regarding the upcoming budget and also the condition of the parks mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of it historically is that the budget that's always been proposed and come before the, before the board and even when I was on budget committee was was just one that was was such a tight budget that no one even questioned it and I don't think it takes much for anyone to walk into our parks to, to look at it and say they are becoming in disrepair and so some of the things that you know in in lieu of What's going on with Paul, Paul, with the possibility of this budget season? They are now starting to discuss the idea of will there be fees or things of that nature that apply not to all pieces of it, but to certain parts that to help to assist in the maintenance of some of the parts of the parks or things that have to be redone. But this, these conversations are very preliminary; they're taking place. Um, but like I say, if we get a chance to take a look through the parks, they are. You know, we have a pool that's down. We have other things that are in disrepair. It's, I mean, it speaks for itself. That's it. That's your comment? That's my comment. Okay. Anything else? Any other well, business? Well, just a quick question. Is there anything, I know conservation is meeting this Wednesday. Is there anything based on the planning board hearing on the, uh, the four-year application that I should be looking for or uh, the only thing that I could say on that is uh, the uh, results uh, on the, um, the test for the uh, chloride sodium and chloride test I did had see come those. In. we did get copies of those right uh, the only thing that uh, was mentioned there uh, was that the Conservation Commission had 
uh, that on their agenda for discussion. Um, whether or not, uh, as far as I know, uh, I'm not aware of it as being like a public hearing or anything. I, my understanding was that they had it from what was said, the way I interpreted it was, uh, that it was just something that was on their discussion as, I guess, as because these test results came in and they were going to have a discussion on it. Okay. Where it's going, I have no idea. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. And one other thing. You know, in our, in our packets this week, there um, there was our the report from the fire department on the work schedule and hours, and mm -hmm. uh, maybe we can review that this week and next week discuss it. Okay. So we have one item in non-public, which is land. The land, and if there's anything else, nothing else uh, in public at this point. So we'll need a motion to go into non-public. Motion to enter non-public under 91A, three, paragraph Roman numeral two, subparagraph D, land. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Roll call? Yes. 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 We're in non-public. <laughs> 